Hello everyone, Level Design Toolkit Update 1.6 is out now. I'll be going through the changes in this video. The first biggest change is the new tutorial map. If you look at the first room, it's sort of like an, an introduction to the toolkit. This is where you'll select the bulk zone for the first time, as well as how you can change the shape, the colour, the, the opacity. You're also able to change whether you want this 3D mesh. You can have it just to be the, the collision box. Or you can have a mesh to better represent it. Available materials and then a GIF on how to open up the widget itself. So click on this button, it'll take you to the GIF. It'll show to show you how you right click when you edit the utility widget and then it will open up. Moving on to the next room, it's good to talk more about the widget itself. So once you have the edited utility widget, you can build upon it um, or you can contact me on Twitter, give me any suggestions. I can look into getting them added to a future update. So telling you how it, it all works and then again if you click on this open url it'll open up a walkthrough video that i recorded for the last update which then again sort of walk you through all the different tools now i'll be coming to the next room this is showcasing all the different tools that can be used within the toolkit so if i select these two meshes and then click calculate distance it'll tell me that the distance on the x is 400 and the zero on the y and z and you're also given the location and the rotation for both actor 1 and actor 2 and then you may notice that the background of this tool has become blue so now the most used tool oh sorry your most recently used tool will have now have a blue background and you can change the color of this in the variable inside the editor utility widget you can also go to the settings and turn off the option completely and you move on to the select meshes there tool so now you notice if i click select static mesh and zone it'll say please select the bulk zone on the drop down which is here so if i now click this it'll show me every uh, single bulk zone that's placed in the scene so this is bulk zone 3 so if i click on that and then select static mesh and zone you'll notice every mesh inside that area has been selected and you can also do the same thing but with names so if i switch to the name tool and we'll, we'll go to bulk zone 4 and then search for SPH, select actors in zone with name. It'll select just the spheres inside this area and we'll select the cubes. This can be quite useful in certain scenarios. And then if we move bulk zone 4 over here and then do select actors with name, and select every, every mesh in the scene that contains SPH in the name and that's based on the name of the world outliner you've got the sky sphere and the spheres here and then with the meshes selected so i select spheres again and isolate selected it'll hide every mesh in the scene besides the ones that contain spk and again you can just unhide all actors so the move tool you select these meshes they 50 on the X, yeah, 150 on the Z, move, just move them, as many times as you want, undo, and you can also enter negative values in here, which will obviously move it in the opposite direction, so with this random cube tool, this random rotate tool, if I set this to say 80, and the Y and the Z and then click rotate. It'll set all these meshes rotation to that value. Then if I click random, it'll set them to a random value between zero and the number that's entered in this box. Now with the align tool, it's going to be quite useful with modular tools. Oh sorry, modular asset packs. Is if you may have placed some meshes in the scene and the X instead of it being on 3000, it might be on like an awkward number. 3247 with a bunch of decimal numbers then enter 100 the nearest 90 align now it aligns all these meshes if i select it you'll see that the locations being rounded up or down to the nearest 100 and the, um, the rotation on the y is being set to 90 tags are also another great way of selecting assets in your world so i switch 
tag 2 and then we've got area 1 this one in the middle has got no tag and area 51 on the right if I search for area 51 you select actors in zone Ooh. I need to select the correct one which is bulk zone 7 7 select actors in zone now selected area 51 then if I do select actors with tag it will select everything in the scene with the area 51 tag regardless if it's inside the zone or not now with the bulk spawning actors inside the head to utility widget there's a variable called actor to spawn in zone so you'll simply put your class into it so you may want to put it as uh, pickups for example and then if you do spawn an area oh again that this bulk zone 5 spawn an area and I've got it set to spawn 5 buttons so you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 they've all been spawned within that area it's important to note that you do need to have a nav mesh in the area without a nav mesh they'll all spawn in the center of the sphere it is floating tool it's a more recent but quite useful tool so if I select these meshes and click it's floating you'll notice that the everything's been hidden besides the cubes oh, sorry besides the spheres the reason for that is because these are floating. The cubes are on the floor, but the spheres are floating. So it's a good way to indicate if you've got any floating meshes in your scene. Now with the materials, pull this sphere over, select the material, click on the mat ID, you can select the material, and this is being pulled from this data table. So if I add a new row to this, let's say uh, foot and we'll give it this arrow material with this red icon and then I compile the editor utility widget if I now go back to the material plot we'll see tut and it's say change the material to the arrow material this is useful if you've got a lot of different materials in your project but you only use a certain amount of them be nice to compile them all into that data table i've seen it took just a couple of seconds just to add a new item now we've got some of the blueprints that come with level design toolkit the first one being a spline again spline like what you've probably seen a million times before just add more points you got the construction blueprint you got a 3d widget which is your end point you can just pull it to however far you need it to go and it's also important to note that the length if I go to this cube open it up in the editor you'll see the proc size is 100, 100, 100 but because I'm on the X axis the length is 100 but if I set this to say 200 I'll have a, a one block gap in between each mesh this can be useful for like fences things like that the dummy is in, it's like a, a fake pivot if I go to the dummy tool this is DP dummy. Select that from the drop down. Select these two meshes. Attach selected dummy. So you know that this dummy now become the parents of them two child. So I can move, scale, or rotate them. And once I'm happy with the new position for them two cubes, I can just delete the dummy from the scene. The cubes will remain in place. This is a uh, FPS line of sight tool is also new in 1.6 so if you select one of the actors sorry if you select one of the blueprints you'll eyedropper and you click on another one and then draw eye line it'll draw a line of sight from the ice eye line from that character to the other and if it it's anything if there's anything in the way the line will be changed to red and then you can also switch from the character itself to just the cylinder that's more preferred for yourself but it's nice to just have the option and the final room is the interactable system so you'll see here I've got a button and this button is able to be connected to any of the other actors that are set up to work with this system and then you can also click on this connect actor button and what that'll do is it'll draw a line from the button that the actor it's connected with 
it's going to be useful if you've got multiple like elevators or doors within your scene and you want to see exactly which button is connected to what door without having to go based off the name but for most of these or if not all of these actors you have a activated sound and attenuation sound and you can use the presets that I've created so you've got close, far and medium range with the bridge you've got a 3D widget you can move about click preview bridge it will show you the bridge in its extent form and you can also reset bridge this just saves you instead of going into the editor and playing in game test how the bridge opens with the door we've got a few settings so we can decide if it opens forwards or backwards if it closes and itself after it's opened and if so the delay set to a default of one and then again you've got the material for the door the open and close sound and attenuation and it's the same thing with this one but this is activated by a, a trigger box instead of the button and the elevator comes with a lot of different options we can have it loop if it loops the delay before it returns so we've got another 3d widget where we want to move the elevator to it, the rotation we can set this to 90 for example travel time the return delay and how fast it returns back to its original position and again we've got these two buttons so if i click preview move lock we'll see it move from its start position to its end position and it's on the rotation of 90 and we can also see it reset so again it saves you going into game to test go for the, the start and return uh, event but the point of interest factor can be activated again by a button so it can be useful if you want to create like a mission scenario where the player reaches a certain point and you activate the button then that might trigger one of these POI actors so if I select you'll see it showing up through the walls we can also change colour so it can be unique to that and then again the activated sound and the attenuation and then the final uh, interaction blueprint is the teleporter so if the character steps on this teleporter they'll be brought wherever this tp location uh, 3d widget is and again it's got the activated sound and attenuation so if i click on settings see that now you've got the four different options that you can change between so i like recently used tool bullet backgrounds hover button over for info so if I hover over these buttons you'll see in the information section it'll tell me what that button does but you can turn that off if you'd like and then a the snap combo box value if you're using this combo box or any of these combo boxes it can have it so it snaps so it's branded up to the nearest one or you can turn the option off and then you'll get your decimal values and then with the additional info for colour section, if you do have colour backgrounds turned on, you'll see that it's all colour coded. And this spot correlates with these different um, options here, so you can read more information about what the tools do. And you've got that what else can I do? And this basically just gives you again more information about what some of the different tools can do that you may not necessarily find within the widget itself. Then we're at the end of the tutorial here. But, um, just thank you for checking out Level Design Toolkit. If you'd like, you can follow me on Twitter, F598. Uh, sorry, F5 underscore 98. You can ask me any questions or give me any suggestions. I'll be happy to take a look. So, yeah. Uh, thank you for watching.